let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. Here for electric flux. So for this one, I have a cube, all of sides A. So this is going to be up here at Z equals A. Out here is going to be at X equals A. And over here, this is going to be at Y equals A. Okay, and the electric field is given by this. So the X component of my electric field is BX squared. It has no Y component. And the Z component of my electric field is C times X. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to find the electric flux through the shaded side and then through the top, which is the dotted side. So let's do the shaded side first. What I'm going to do is I'll call part A the shaded side and we'll do part B the uh, dotted side. What I'm going to do once again is I'm just going to kind of blow this up a little bit. That way we can maybe better see what's going on. And so I'm only looking at this shaded side right here. And so we guys, we pretty much have a square right here at x equals a. Okay. Here's going to be our square. Not the pretty square, but this is it. Okay, so our a vector, our a vector, remember, is always normal to your surface, which this is going to be in the x direction. And so if I want to find my vector for A in this situation, this is going to be, of course, our area. This, these are all squares, each length A. So it's going to be A squared, 0, and 0. Now because my electric field is in the x direction, what I'm, all I care about is the x component of my electric field. And the x component of my electric field is just that BX squared. Now what I need to determine is, is my electric field the same, or is it different at different points on the surface? Notice how your electric field that's going to be spitting out this direction changes with respect to x. But this point right here is x equals a. And so at this point you're at x equals a, at this point you're at x equals a, at every point on the square, no matter what, I'm always at x equals a. Your electric field is always going to be b a squared through this surface because you're always at x equals a. So it's going to be the same. It's literally just going to be b a squared. And so that's why for this one, our electric flux would just be e dotted with a, which whenever I dot the a squared with the b a squared, I'll be that b a squared times a squared, you get b a to the fourth. Let's take a look at the dotted side. Okay, for part B, let's go ahead and find the electric flux through that top one. So once again, let me kind of blow it up a little bit. That way you all can better see what's going on. Okay, so what we've got is we just care about this square that's up here. Here. So here is, we're just going through the top side. So now let's figure out our a vector. Our a vector, again, is going to be, you know, normal to that plane, and it's going to be pointed in the z direction. And so because it's pointed in the z direction, this a vector is going to be 0, 0, a squared. But because I've got the, it's pointed in the z direction, all I care about is the z component of my electric field, which the z component of my electric field is c times x. And so what I need to determine is, is my electric field the same, or is it different at different points on that surface? Well, notice out here, I'm at x equals 0. Out here, I'm at x equals a. Out here, I'm at a different x value, and so forth. And so your electric field is different along different slices of this surface, because it changes with respect to x, and my x is changing. So I'll actually be integrating with respect to x this time. And so because I know that I'm going to be integrating, my electric flux in this situation is going to be E dotted with dA. Okay, so let's figure out what that dA, dA is. Let's take a little slice out of here. If I take a little slice out of here, okay, and I call this my dA, because we'll be integrating with respect to x, 
is going to have a width dx. And then as for this length, because this is a square and a by a, we know this is just going to be, well, little a. And so if I want to find dA, the vector for dA would be 0, 0, and then your a times dx. And so, well, since we're going to do e dotted with dA, my electric flux is going to be the integral of, let's see, the z component of e is c times x. The z component of dA is a dx. And then as for my limits of integration, we're going to go from x equals 0 out to x equals a. Pulling my constants to the front, so the integral 0 to a of a c x dx, what this would be, this would be a c x squared over 2 from 0 to a, which would be a c over 2 times, plugging a into there, that would be an a squared, minus 0, I'm plugging 0 into there, and so what our final answer would be for this bottom part, or I guess technically for the top portion, this would be a cubed times c over 2. And so once again, it's kind of, electric flux is kind of tricky to get, I'm not going to lie. But it's easy once you get it, okay? The math isn't going to be hard. What you do is you first find your A vector and determine that when I dot E and A, is the electric field the same or is it different along different parts of the surface? In this case, since I was looking at the X component of my electric field, um, I looked here, uh, and on this surface you know, bx squared, well, you're always at x equals a. This entire, no matter what point you pick, you're always going to pick x equals a. It's always going to be the x-coordinate. So my electric field is the same at every point through that surface. However, in this one, when I looked at the z component of my electric field, because that was the direction of my a, this is also a function of x. But the problem this time is, is that, not the problem, but the situation is, is that you have different x values on that surface, right? Along this slice, you're at x equals 0. Along this slice, you're at x equals a. You're at different x values. And so because your electric field will be different at different points on that surface, that's when you integrate. Once you can get that down, once you can determine when do I do a dot product versus when do I do an, when do I do an integral, electric flux becomes relatively straightforward after that.